Is everybody here? Yes, teacher. Susie Sparrow? Here, teacher. Bertie Birdbrand? Here, teacher. The Canary Sisters? Here, here, here. Penelope Pinfeather? Here, here. Here, here, here. Today we're going to study about ancient history, love and mystery, mathematics, acrobatics, reading, spelling, storytelling. <laughs> no, 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 no. The study of musical instruments is the subject for today. The study of musical instruments is the subject for today. Did you ever stop to think when the band plays Rinky Tink where all the music comes from? From a toot and a whistle and a plunk and a boom. That's where the music comes from. Did you ever understand a symphony so grand, so bright and sentimental? Say when the band begins to play, just where the music comes from. From a and a and a and a, that's where the music comes from. Now, students, fly with me to the dawn of history. We'll start investigating the toot and the whistle and the plunk and the boom. It's very stimulating. Four cavemen sat around one day, each with an instrument to play. Writing songs was their profession, performing at the first jam session. When a caveman blew through an old cow's horn, right then and there the first flute was born. Let's look ahead in history. And here we are in Egypt in 2000 BC. Now on the banks of the river Nile, the toot has certainly changed its style. And the kind of a note that the caveman blows is not good enough for the old pharaoh. When Pharaoh heard the cavemen honk, he gave the fellow quite a conk. The Egyptians had discovered brass. This gave the horn a lot more class. The horns were very long and straight. Longer and lower too. But wait. Someone found out the sound's the same, no matter what the shape or name. Valves give the trumpet extra sound. A French horn curves go round and round. The trombone smear is commonplace. And lowest of all is the double bass. Now whether it's Dixieland or Bop, a small cafe or a high school hop, the horn most always heads the band and rides it strong. Now, take off, man. caves to see how the second man behaves. When this 
caveman blew on a tube of grass, the very first whistle came to pass. In order to make his cave girl smile, he had to improve his whistle style. And when he saw he was doing fine, he added more holes, uh, about eight or nine. By using his head instead of his feet, some genius found a way to beat this problem in a manner neat. With wires, pads, and pins are plenty, ten fingers do the work of twenty. The family of reeds has really grown. It now includes the bassoon, the oboe, When our third caveman plunked on the string of his bow, it was the first plunk, uh, as far as we know. First you take the bow, and sometime later, add a little jar to make a resonator, add a few strings, listen how it rings, change the jar to a box of wood, slide the box down, a pretty good add a few pegs to tune it fine. Now, from here, there are two ways to go. Plunk it. Or play it with a bowl. Of the bowing instruments, there's the cello. But most renowned has always been the beauty of the violin. Piano, best for centuries, is played by striking all the keys. Lutes and lyres were plunked, but they aren't played very much today. Now people crowd from near and far to hear a good man on guitar. <laughs> that click or tap came rattles, bells, and we presume all other instruments that go boom. From tight stretched skins and bits of bone came tom-tom, drum, and xylophone. Their chimes, and bells, and from the Congo, drums like the Caribbean bongo. A snare drum's needed, I'm afraid, to start a thrilling street parade. Drums boom boom with the click clack zoom in a Latin rhythm. 
Now that we know how music is made, we will proceed to the next lesson, harmony. Oh, how happy we will be when we learn our harmony. The father of music, as it's known to us, is an ancient Greek named Pythagoras. Uh, Pyth Pythagoras, how? Pythagoras, the father of mathematics. I thought we were studying music. Ah, but Pythagoras is the father of both mathematics and music. Listen, first we'll need a string. Take the string and stretch it good and tight. Plunk it. Now divide it in half. Plunk again. See? It's the same tone, one octave higher. Now divide the next section. And the next. Pythagoras discovered the octave has a ratio of two to one. With simple fractions, he got this. And from this, harmony in numbers developed the musical scale of today. The scale is identical on any instrument. Of course, he probably played it on a lyre. Just the same on a trumpet. Or a saxophone. You can imagine how excited Pythagoras was when he shared his findings with his pals, a fraternity of eggheads known as the Pythagoreans. And he discovered that a pleasing sound was achieved when he took a basic tone and added a third and a fifth tone and sometimes a sixth, then a seventh. The Pythagoreans played using a flute and an early version of the bass violin and a lyre. same instruments today might sound like this. Now that we know what the instruments are and why we play certain notes and chords, the next thing to do is use them to play a simple song. A simple song? Bertie Birdbrain, you're the simplest one here. You name the song. Uh, Old MacDonald Hell Farm. Oh, that song doesn't tell anything about music. Uh, then what about uh, Old MacDonald Had a Band? All right. And with this chart, I shall impart the instruments that MacDonald had. Yeah. 
recite your piece. Sailing, sailing upon the ocean blue Gave the inspiration for the song we sing to you Life on the ocean wave, a home in the rolling deep Thank you. 